Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. Um, I haven't done a lot of videos in the last uh, six months. Uh, we're trying to seem like COVID finally died down and um, we're able to do a little bit more time on the job. Um, anyways, I want to talk to you today about a shed that we wired um, and also just kind of briefly explain voltage drop. The issues that I see with a lot of these ranches and they don't prepare for additions that add on. Um, so real quick, I want to show you. The main service comes in around the side of that house and then power comes in underground. To here. As you can see, a few years back, that money got damaged. It's kind of hard to repair that, but it'd be better to get at least some tape on it. <laughs> uh, we'll have to talk to him about that. You don't want any mice chewing that. Power was brought in, and I didn't do this years ago. Um, they, somebody brought in the power. My, my thought is about 10 years ago. Oh, well, there's your guy. Anyways, he brought a number two aluminum here. Probably in thoughts that, they, that they're never going to add on to this place. But I probably would, myself, would have brought 125 amp. And if 125 amp's good for a one out, I would have ran a two out. Um, anyways, so all of this was done. And then... The problem is, is when people keep adding addition after addition on This was added on a few years ago. I don't know who wired it. Um, although it does have livestock and hay, so none of this actually counts. This is supposed to be bell boxed and covered with in-use covers. And then everything compression type, if it's sealed, the Romex would be okay because dust can't get in. So this is a panel that they fed all the way over here. And I think that was a mistake because I would have fed all the way across when this was open before they drywall the ceiling in there. I would have ran a number two aluminum SER and put 80 amps over here. Because then you're kind of stepping it up two sides on that voltage, not running a six gauge at 50 amp. So whoever they knew as their family handy guy kind of screwed that up in my opinion. What we did is we cannot give them more than 40 amps out there if this is a 50 amp panel. He's probably not going to pull anything close to that. They only needed a couple plugs and some light. So we put some LED lights. I'll show you that in a minute. But we were able to put a quad in here. These are fake spots. These are not even usable. Should have just crossed those off. Okay, so coming out of there, I ran a six gauge just to help with the voltage drop. Though my load is gonna be probably his cutting saw, charging his batteries. But regardless, if they sell the place, you wanna keep in mind to have a larger wire size, of course. So this is how we wired it. They were gonna put up some tape board and cover the wire. Otherwise, you're not supposed to come perpendicular because they don't want you hanging stuff on it. But it is only just a shed from what I see, power tools. This was his workbench. He works on his sprinklers here. Um, and then, so we put an outside floodlight right here. Then we decided to put LED lighting in here. These are two eight foot strips. And then we put this right here for the wire and then coming in here. So this is going to be our sub panel. 
flexing into it because it was right up next to the other um, garage or shed, or excuse me, it's more like a, a barn. And then this right here, we couldn't really put a panel on this side. So coming in though, I read my voltage and I'm gonna have to talk to the customer. We do have a little bit of a voltage going on. This was 110 or 105 and this was 121 to 127. So that's probably going to be right about a 15 to 17% fluctuation, which is not a good sign. Um, it should be closer to 120 to 40-ish. But um, yeah, we just put in th uh, three circuits, a uh, lighting circuit, and then two power circuits here. Um, and so, but keeping in mind, in case they don't pegboard everything, just keeping everything tight and up high. But GFI protecting this circuit all the way that way, and then GFI protecting that. And then lighting right here, you do not have to GFI protect unless you're concerned that it's outdoor or it's near shower. So, um, but uh, yeah, so I ran six gauge to this with an eight gauge neutral, eight gauge on the neutral, actually no, three sixes on the neutral as well. And then we did 10 gauge on the ground. Um, but I did copper coming this way. It was about a 35 foot run and um, Make sure you read your voltage, guys, when you're doing your planning, because if there is an issue, you want to be able to tell them ahead of time uh, that they're having a voltage fluctuation. And what can that do? Well, if the GFI smoke because the voltage gets too high on one of those legs, then you're going to know right away there's an issue. Um, but then if the lighting has an issue because the, the voltage is low, going low on the other side, then that lighting is going to dim and possibly burn out the LEDs. So anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully the video is not too long. We have to try to download those, and I'll try to get some more out to you. Thanks.